Imagine winning one copy of every magic card that exists. Well, somebody did. It happened in the most epic contest in magic history. <music> Greetings, owners of fine luxury cardboard rectangles, and welcome to my video on the most epic contest in Magic the Gathering history. Yesterday, I was going through the first... I want to say episode every time. Issue. Man, I'm an old man. I remember when magazines were actually a big deal. Now nobody cares about them. But anyways, somebody, Legendary Man, mailed this out to me. I was going through it and I found this right here. Basically, this is all the documentation for the actual contest where they did indeed give away one of every card. It says right here. Be the envy of the free world, or at least your clique of friends, when you walk away with an entire set of Magic the Gathering cards. Yeah, you heard right. Win one of each different card with a unique name. The Moxes, the Black Lotus, all them legend guys. Heck, you even get the crappy cards like Avoid Fate and Goblin Artisans. One of everything. Second prize, no winners. You win nothing. Zip, zero, nada. Go play Spellfire. That's funny to me. So on this side here... You can see they have the anatomy of a card breakdown and the reason for that is let me tell you let me tell you how it actually worked so what do you have to do to win this stuff simple we want you to design your own magic the gathering game card and that's why they have the sample here on the side to tell you exactly what you need first make it look like a magic card right size correct placement of text the whole kit and caboodle secondly it has to be all you unique artwork you can't swipe the artwork from anywhere else if you do you're out the card concept also has to be original. It doesn't matter if it's a creature, an enchantment, artifact, or whatever, but the card has to be original idea. And hey, if you want to make a humorous slant, go for it. And we're going to show some of the cards, guys, and uh, you'll get a chuckle out of at least one of them. We're just looking for originality. The best of the best will be showcased in an upcoming issue of Inquest. Now, the legal lingo amused me because at certain points in it, it's totally like it has normal legit legal text but then it goes into just jokes where it's like no purchase necessary contest is open to anyone except employees of wizards press their immediate families and anybody who offs people with the channel fireball combination you're a cheese boy in the terms and conditions it says you're a cheese boy how awesome is that that's so good it makes me think of that star boy song i'm a motherfucking cheese boy uh, uh, uh. that's so funny and then it just has most of it here is still normal uh, normal terms and conditions but at the very end it says all decisions are final all whiners will be punched in the forehead <laughs> how awesome is that so over here they had the little they had the little setup here where you actually mailed in the card you you basically would attach this to the card itself and mail it into these guys it's so crazy how ancient this is well after reading this, I got really curious, so I went ahead and started doing some research, and I was able to find information on who won the contest, and find a bunch of the entry cards as well. So I've selected some of the cards to go through. Now, can you imagine winning this? This is one of every single card. You get the Moxes and Lotus and everything. So let's see what people came up with in an attempt to take down this massive prize. Starting out with one I really like. It's called Age. Two black enchant creature. Enchanted, now it says target creature. Understand that this is written using old templating under old magic enchantment wordings. It would say target creature, but that's actually the creature being enchanted. So really how it reads is enchanted creature loses all abilities that require tapping or activation costs. That's pretty cool. So I, I like the concept behind it. It's got some interesting flavor and the artwork with the dragon with kind of the, uh, the cataracts over his eyes or whatever. That's an excellent concept. I like that. It gets, a, it gets a little more wonky and crazy from there. The next one, baby in a blender. Uh, yeah, you put it up for nothing like a mox, a zero cast cost artifact. Play this card to freak out your opponents. What's red and cries and goes round and round? This is a literally submission that made it into the top picked ones, guys. Then we've got Blood Angel. This, this one's cool. Four mana for a four, three first strike. If it's destroyed but not buried, and for those of you who don't know, buried means destroyed without possibility of regeneration. So if this angel is destroyed, but not destroyed without possibility of regeneration, you lose four life and the angel is regenerated. Angel may be regenerated by other means to prevent this loss of life. No other means can prevent or redirect this loss of life. That's basically like saying you, it's, you're paying for life. 
The new wording of this would be basically saying you pay for life and the angels regenerated. All this extra stuff, they used to have to explain all the rules on the cards. Nowadays, they have much cleaner, less clunky wordings. Then we've got Bugaboo. This card would be too strong to make now. It's a funky concept, though. One blue mana to be able to play a fast effect. Basically, it's saying you can use an activated ability from a creature in your graveyard once by paying its activated cost. It's cool. It has that skeletal hand coming from the graveyard. It's in blue, which feels really weird. Obviously, this would feel more like a black card. Back then, blue had these tricksy kind of abilities, though. So it fit the color wheel in blue back in the day. Then we've got Dark Wizard. Now, this one here is actually a card that out of everything that's submitted is the closest to being just a full-on regular magic card. Three mana for a 1-1. One, one. Tap it. Target creatures. Power and toughness to switch until end of turn. Effects altering power and toughness instead and vice versa. Basically, if you just switch this down to one creature instead of all creatures, this is like the dwarf, uh, Dwarven Thaumaturgist. And I think maybe one other creature that they made that swaps creatures' power and toughness till end of turn. Or they did make that red legendary creature that does all of them as well. Either way, this is the one that's closest to being a full-on regular magic card. And I like the artwork as well. This one's cool. Then you've got Dionysus Pack. This one I just included because I thought it was cute. That Check it out. The Dromaeosaurus. They're uh, dinosaurs, guys. And now we've got a bunch of dinosaurs kicking around. So it's a nice throwback to that. This is four mana for a 2 2 first striker. You have to sacrifice another creature to give it Rampage 2 till end of turn. That's garbage, guys. Rampage 2 means for every creature past the first creature that blocks this, it gets plus 2 plus 2. So basically, you'd have to wait until at least two creatures block this for it to even work. Sack a creature, and even then, it's only a 4 4. Terrible. Flavor Tech says the whole warm blooded, cold blooded debate is sort of irrelevant with six of these things bearing down on you. <laughs> All right. Now we have an absolutely broken card. Look at this thing, guys. 11 to put out. It's an artifact. 8 mana. Search your library for any two cards. Put them in your hand. 3 mana. Get any card from your graveyard back. 11 mana. Grab any card you own outside the game. Be careful what you wish for. This card would have been restricted or banned right away. So bustedly dumb. This is one of those fan cards that's way too over the top. And we've got one that's really interesting. Open Wounds. One red and one colorless. Enchantment. Creatures do not heal as normal during the healing phase. The healing phase is part of the end step now, guys, but you can still understand conceptually. Uh, marked dam mark damage creatures with a counter for each point of damage received. When counters are equal to greater than the creature's toughness, that creature is destroyed. So basically, you just keep track of uh, damage on all creatures individ individually, and it doesn't heal during the end step. I think this is a really fun concept, but you can understand why it would never be made a magic card because it's way too many dice and rule upkeeping added in, so it's not worth it. Then we've got Pandora's Box, four cast and cost artifact, pay one mana, sacrifice it to bury, which is destroy without regeneration, all cards in play. All players must discard their hand, so it's like a Nevenril's disc on crack. Everything in play gets destroyed, everybody loses their hand, and then each player draws 15 new cards from his or her library and puts all permanents from them from that hand directly into play. So it's like a crazy Eureka as well. That's It's really, really swingy. This is obviously way too overpowered, but a fun concept. And we got Pharaoh's Whistle. If you look at it really hard, you can tell it's like an Egyptian dude, but at first you just go, that's a weird tip dick whistle. And four and tap, target... Any card an opponent has in play, you become the control of that card, and you shuffle the whistle into your opponent's, opponent's deck. This is fun. Wizard stays away from cards that go into your opponent's deck, because obviously you have issues at the end of the game getting them back and other stuff like that. So they don't do this kind of thing, but it's a fun concept. And then we've got Schizophrenia. This one is insane. Three blue and X enchantment. Target player sets aside their current hand, draws X number of three cards hand. So let's say you paid three blue... And three, uh, let's say, actually, let's do five. Three blue and five colorless. Then you would draw five hands of three cards. Fifteen cards in total. Five three-card hands. Set them all aside. And then at the beginning of each upkeep, you have to randomly choose. Target player randomly chooses one hand. So basically, each turn, you're going to randomly get a hand of three cards. This thing is dumb. I like the artwork, though. It's pretty crazy. I really enjoy the concept behind it. So you guys are probably asking, what about the winner? What won? Well, let me show you. The grand prize winner, Changeling by Karen Weatherby. This card right here is a black interrupt. Gain control of target creature as it's being cast. 
Now they've done spells like that. It's pretty cool. Player casting creature gains a changeling counter. Treat changeling as a 0-1 black creature. Now this is funky because this is based on old mythology, old folklore. And it, there's uh, this is done as well in Magic in, on an actual card with Crib Swap. Where a normal baby is taken and it's replaced with a changeling. So that's cool. So they narrowed the thousands of entries down to the 26 they showed in the magazine. I picked the ones that I thought were worth looking at. I didn't show you all of them. It had everything in terms of why they chose it. A unique, well-balanced card, excellent art, and a really cool story behind the whole thing. Just check out the flavor text. Fairies would often steal a healthy child, replacing it with a sickly imp. Spells would disguise the imp as the soul stolen child. Yeah, basically, that's that's exactly what's going on with Crib Swap as well kind of deal. It is cool. The artwork definitely transmits it. I think this is a good one to have chosen as the winner. Now, if you guys think about it, think about the amount of money that uh, the winner, like the cards back then even, how it worked is one of every magic card in printing from any edition. So for certain cards like Black Lotus and Moxes, you would expect it to be unlimited because that would be the cheapest edition for them to acquire. So that's pretty amazing. It, in particular, since I did not specify which sets were included in terms of, obviously nowadays, every set from magic would be uh, a, a lot more, right? But when it, when it comes down to this one, let me read the legal text here and see exactly what's clued. Here we go. Okay, only one magic card of each name in Magic the Gathering, Arabian Nights. It's funny because they call it Magic the Gathering, which by that they mean the base set. That's Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, and fourth, uh, Revised at this point. So one of each card that shows up from those sets. And then one of each card's from Arabian Nights, guys. Arabian Nights. You know how much money is in that set? That's insane. Antiquities. Mixture Workshop, all that craziness. Legends, The Dark, and originally they had decided to include Fallen Empires, it's noted here, but due to the research that I did later, they decided uh, that they weren't going to include, no wait, sorry, I'm getting that confused with research I did for a different video, where they excluded Fallen Empires from Chronicles, my bad. Fallen Empires was part of this contest, it's just obviously so negligible that even now if you look up the prices, Fallen Empires, a full set of Fallen Empires would have added $20 to the value of this of the contest then and now but if you sat down and figured out the value of all the cards from all those sets it would be astronomical so i found this fascinating i hope you guys did as well if you enjoyed it hit that like button if you're new here subscribe on that subscribler button with your subscribler crayon and we will see you children next time together we will eat this rabbit <laughs> together we are the sixth color of magic what you're supposed to say, together we are the sixth color of magic. Oh, together we are the sixth color of magic. <laughs>